All right. Well, thank you all so much for taking the time tonight uh, to attend our um, first webinar. Uh, we'll have a PowerPoint presentation that we go through, uh, but really the bulk of tonight is to answer questions that were submitted ahead of time uh, or questions that you have as we go through our presentation. And the nice thing about this is that we'll actually have it recorded on our website so that you can send this to folks who may not be able to attend tonight, and then people can watch uh, at a later date and we'll be having follow-up in-person meetings as well um, to go through uh, with any other questions that they might have. So um, we'll be sharing the PowerPoint uh, and I'll be going through, but feel free to type in questions that you may have uh, as we kind of go through uh, this evening. And then we'll get to all the questions that were asked ahead of time and any that were uh, asked um, tonight during the presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and share our PowerPoint you should be able to see the PowerPoint here um, uh, on your screen, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and we'll get started. Uh, so I um, appreciate again taking the time this evening to, uh, to listen, to learn a little bit. Um, on the webinar tonight is myself, your county auditor, uh, David Thomas. We also have Scott Yamamoto, our real estate manager, and Heather Hall, uh, who all of you probably know and interact with who's our CAUV program coordinator. Um, so I will be doing the discussion tonight and kind of uh, talking about most of the different points. If uh, I forget something or um, if I miss something, uh, Scott or Heather uh, will chime in and same thing with Q&A, they'll help uh, answer any of the questions. Um, you all likely remember when I was first uh, running for this office and, and you elected me, um, I made a very uh, straightforward promise that um, you know, you'll hear everything from me, um, good, bad, or indifferent, and um, I'll answer the questions and I'll share the information directly to you. So this is a great example for tonight. Uh, most of the time in presentations and public sessions, this is probably nearly our 200th uh, presentation that we've made to the public as an auditor's office. I usually have uh, kind of a a light presentation or make jokes or have different kind of funny things sprinkled throughout. Um, tonight is a very serious discussion uh, and it'll be the same thing with our in-person meetings as well. This is a very serious topic and it's not one at all um, that I'm happy to be talking about or sharing. Uh, it's, it's very unfortunate some of the information that we'll be discussing tonight. So this will be a very serious um, topic and a very serious conversation. So we have right now about uh, 31 or so folks uh, tuning in live just here on Zoom. And then we're also streaming on Facebook Live as well. Uh, we had a little over 70 or so folks RSCP, so they'll be getting the link with the video too. Um, so please share this information with folks who may not have been able to attend tonight live uh, during the, the session. Uh, after tonight, we have four upcoming scheduled in-person town halls sprinkled all throughout Ashtabula County. Uh, that way we have a little more of a personal uh, time with, with folks who are coming to ask questions. Uh, those sessions will be focused on similarly CAUV and giving an update, uh, stuff that we're gonna be talking about tonight, but also an update on our trennial uh, value process, um, that state mandate process that happens every three years to update all property values here in Ohio. And then also uh, with November, upcoming levies, uh, you know, just kind of going over the levy estimator and how to use that. So our first one will be September 26th at 6 p.m. at the Colebrook uh, Township Hall. Uh, Colebrook is the township with the highest proportion of CAUV. So I purposely chose Colebrook uh, in that community as our very first uh, discussion to be able to answer the questions of the folks that live right there in the community. As I said, feel free to chat in Q&A questions as we go along. Um, we also have questions that were submitted previously too. So for tonight, we're gonna go over really a 30,000 foot view of CUV briefly, and then get into really why we're all discussing tonight, um, which is the state mandated change in the soil values that we're seeing throughout Ohio and impacting us here in Ashtabula County. Essentially briefly, uh, why? Where do um, you actually be able to see the change that's happening for your individual property? What impact will that have for your individual property? and then your options as a property owner. And then we'll ask uh, and answer some questions. So um, CAUV, you all, you likely are on the program. You understand what it is. 
Um, but remember, it's that idea for commercial agriculture, not personal agriculture, but commercial agriculture, that instead of our office taking the market value for the uh, however many acres you have in commercial agriculture, instead of us taking that market value, instead, the um, state allows for essentially to be valued by the soil type beneath the farm. So not taking the highest and the best use of value, but instead a much, much more reduced lower uh, value, the CAUV value based on the soil types that are beneath the farm. Um, so it allows for really a substantially larger um, uh, credit, uh, substantially larger decrease in your actual tax bill because your value is significantly lower um, than what it would be if we were to market uh, and have your farm valued based on what the market could fetch for the property. So it's based off of soil types. Um, in Ashtabula County, we actually have about 69 different soil types that run all throughout our county underneath our farms. Throughout the state of Ohio, there's nearly 500 different types of soil. And the state will assign a value per acre to that soil type. So um, most farms don't have just one soil. It's kind of like, uh, you know, imagine rivers running through property, just like the different types of soils. So maybe a farm has four or five different types of soils. And what we'll do is that we'll have the assigned state value per soil type. And instead of the market value for the acres, we'll have, you know, let's say you've got 10 acres. Let's say two of them are soil type X, three of them are soil type Y, and five of them are soil type Z. So we'll actually calculate the total value based on those soil types instead of the market value. And that's what we then assign your tax rate to. So significantly less. Um, you know, on average, I would say here in the county, I'm pretty comfortable to say that, you know, let's say we have uh, an average market value of, of farmland here in the county at around $5,000 an acre. Um, the CEV soil type value averages, you know, currently right around $400 an acre. So it's a significantly different um, amount of value that we're able to give a large savings. Uh, that kind of will run the gambit a little bit in terms of, of numbers for you know, how much you're saving, but anywhere between 75 to 90% of savings for your property taxes. It's, it's really quite big. Now, how the state determines these though, is every three years, remember I talked about the triennial property value update earlier, every three years, the state mandates that counties update property values. That's for residential, commercial, any structures, land, all those different types of things, we update the market value. In addition to that, the State Department of Taxation will give us an updated CAUV value for all of the different soil types. So every three years, your CAUV soil type value updates as well. The last change, the last update to the value was back in 2020. And now three years later, we're looking at 2023. All of these are based off of January 1st in terms of the value. And you pay your taxes one year in arrears. So these will impact your tax bill for next year in 2024. Now the map you can see here is actually in 2022, all of our different CUV inspections. And I'm often asked why um, I spend so much time. Our office does yearly meetings. We spend a lot of time with the Farm Bureau and a lot of time with farmers uh, because of, you know, one, many of you know that my grandparents are still um, farmers in Trumbull County, 80 years old, going strong with a good number of cattle. Um, but two, we have a, a, a large number of CAUV properties here in Ashfield County. You can see in the green all the different um, parcels of CAUV. So this impacts really a good number of our, our folks here in the county. And so how do then the state determine the actual soil value types and the values assigned to those soil types? Um, there was a, a geological study done many years ago to determine the soil types under all the different um, properties here in Ohio. And then the values are actually uh, based off of a formula. If you've been in CUV, you've probably heard of that infamous formula. Um, it's changed over the years. It uh, had quite a spike that we'll see back in 2014. And so the last essentially tweak or change to the actual formula itself was effective for about 2017 or so. The State Department of Taxation determines um, the formula, determines the inputs, what is used, 
in coordination with the state legislature, in coordination with the governor who appoints the tax commissioner. Um, and uh, I will tell you that the Farm Bureau has um, a really strong influence and strong respect in Columbus. Um, so I know that they're going to be looked at, and we'll get to that a little bit later, in terms of how we can help fix some of the problems that are happening now. So all these different groups worked together back in 2017, in addition to private citizens, to uh, have tweaks to the formula to help decreases. For Asheville County 2017 and 2020, and we'll see that in just a little bit, saw large decreases, um, much lower values for CAUV uh, than we see even um, now and into the future. And the, the formula essentially attempts to mimic the economic status of an average farm in Ohio. So if there's any appraisers out there, essentially the formula tries to use the income approach, tries to value property based on income or based on profitability, instead of based on what the property could fetch on the open market. Um, and this is very, very important. Uh, auditors have no involvement in the formula. Auditors have no involvement in determining the inputs. Um, we have just purely the role of taking the values that the state gives us for all the different soil types, plugging those into our system per soil type, and assigning the tax rate to those values. Um, I believe that we have additional role, which is to educate, which is to inform, to be a resource for taxpayers. Um, there are also, though, many counties, I'll tell you, that don't believe in that role and just do the administrative side. Um, so it's want to be very, very clear. There's two kind of takeaways from tonight, in a sense. This is one of them, that myself, our office, counties across Ohio that are updating values this year, county auditors have no uh, responsibility or ability to change these values or to have an impact in what's happening with the increases in values. Uh, we are purely an administrative role in this. Um, so then for that formula, and I'll try to describe as best I can, uh, essentially there's different inputs that are used in the formula. And that's yield info, cropping patterns, crop prices, non-land production costs, and capitalization rate. And I'm gonna to touch on essentially the formula real quick so that you get a sense. The increases that we're seeing and values are the perfect economic storm, of course, for what we've been seeing across the country with large inflation and with great yields uh, here in Ohio um, with our crop productions. So those different factors, the cropping pattern is essentially based on the number of acres of corn, beans, and wheat compared to total acres of other crops. And those are based on statewide averages. Um, one of the questions oftentimes is that, you know, the formula really only takes into account the average um, crop farm of corn, beans, or wheat, doesn't take into account then other types of agriculture farms or other types of crops. Crop prices. So that's based on surveys of prices from elevators across Ohio. And it uses a seven-year Olympic average. And that's important because essentially we're looking back seven years. So from 2023 back to 2016. Um, and as the years move on then, we're essentially taking in new years of high uh, inflationary pressures um, and we're dropping off then years of significantly lower inflationary pressures, which is one of the reasons for the large spikes. Crop yields, which are based on the farm um, service uh, agency's yields per acre for each soil type uh, averaged across Ohio. Non-land production costs, which are based on farmer surveys uh, by the Ohio State University. And then the capitalization rate, which is based on interest rates um, for 15-year fixed mortgages at farm service credits. So the formula is essentially creating the gross operating income, which is when you take the crop yield times the average crop price, makes sense. Then you subtract the non-land production costs to get the net operating income, okay? And then the value is the net operating income divided by the capitalization rate. So that's the formula in a quick nutshell with the different factors that go into it. Um, and uh, like I said, some of the pressures of inflation, of dropping off really low years in terms of costs, in terms of um, yields, adding in now from 2020 to 2023, really high years of those. 
and you get the values that we're seeing um, here in Ashtabula County and across the state. So here's the average CAUV formula in Ohio um, for the uh, average essentially value per acre. Now you can see Ashtabula County had update years in 2008, 2011, 2014, 2017, and in 2020. You'll see that there are spikes. 2014 was the largest spike. And then you see that we start to go back down after the formula was adjusted and after some of those past inflationary um, and uh, economic pressures were relieved. Now, what we've seen, though, is that the low point was in 2020. That's the current values that you're being taxed at are based off of 2020. We're having those updated here in 2023. But what we saw in 2021 and 2022 started to creep back up. And then now what we're seeing in 2023 is right back here. You can tell it just like with the market, things go up and down. And that's what we're seeing here with the formula is that this was the low point. And now as we start to drop off some of these years, we're starting to come back up based on the current economic situation. And so for your individual farm or for your property or properties that you know, as soon as we got the information from the state that these are the new values, we emailed out all the emails that we have on CAEV, made press releases, I did videos. Essentially, our role, I wanted folks to be as up-to-date, as aware as possible that these values were changing. And we put these on our websites so that you can actually do your own change and see where your values will be moving for your CAUV. Now, this is the time for the other takeaway that I want to make sure that everyone is aware and knows. So remember, the first one is that county auditors have no role in determining the formula and adjusting the formula we just administrate. The second one is that value increases do not equal dollar for dollar or percentage for percentage tax increases. So as we start to talk about what the average value increases are for CAUV or for properties in general during the triennial, these, these average value increases are not tax increases. Taxes will increase, unfortunately, due to higher values, but they will not increase at the same amount as we're seeing values increase. So as we talk about, you know, 30%, 40%, unfortunately, we're going to be seeing 300% for CAUV in some soil types. Those are value increases. Those are not 300%, 30%, 40% tax increases. And I'll get to why we can't talk about tax rates or tax increases yet, but it's very important to know and to share with everyone that value increases do not equal dollar for dollar, percentage for percentage tax increases. So where do you see your change then? There's a couple of different options on our website um, and you'll see these here and I'll actually display one for you so that you can see it. You should be able to see our website now um, on, uh, on your screen. I just wanna make sure that you can so that um, this is an important part. And yes, you can, excellent. So you go on our website, also, we can do this if you um, come in person and talk um, to us here. We can walk you through this as well at our office. There's two different places that you can go to see this. One, I highly encourage you to come down to latest news or in the rotator right here, state mandated CAUV 2023 values released. What you'll see here is a ton of information, essentially what we're talking about now and a whole bunch of links where you can go um, and see more details about what's happening. I've made a couple of videos. I also encourage you, the Farm Bureau has an excellent website for CAUV resources and information. Click here for that. But if you want to see essentially where your values are going for your individual property, you can either click here to view the changes in 2020 values versus the 2023 values. We'll go through this process first so that you can see it. And then I'll show you the other spot on our website that you can see it. So if you click here, what's going to come up is this Excel sheet. And on this Excel sheet, you're going to see here right now the 2023 values and the 2020 values. And you're going to see all the different soil types that we have here in Ashtabula County. And so you're going to be able to see then, for example, BKA soil in 2020, the crop was $900 an acre. In 2023, 
the state value is $2,100 an acre. Heather also did an excellent job at, and this is how, and one of the reasons why we've acted so quickly and so strongly as we have, breaking out what the percentage increase is and how many crops, acres, and how many wood acres are impacted here in Ashtabula County. Now, you're gonna see the largest acreage impact is MHA, soil type. Nearly 40,000 acres in Ashtabula County have that soil type. You'll see we have just over 103,000 acres in CAUV, 108,000 the total in the program. So 40,000 acres are MHA soil type. In 2020, that soil type was $350 an acre. In 2023, for next year's tax bill, that soil type will now be $1,090 an acre. That's a 311% increase. That is why this is a very serious conversation and we want property owners to know that these increases are coming to the level that they are. So you can use this Excel to be able to see yourself and I'll show you how you can see yourself on your property page. So I'm gonna keep this right here and this is our website still. I'm gonna go to property search. Anyone can do this, this is our public website. Owner search, one of the more prolific uh, farmers here in the county, uh, the Uhas brothers. I'm going to um, search for one of their properties. You search, you can do your last name, you can do by address. We're going to pull up the very first one of their properties here on 307. This is your property page. You'll be able to see values, your land, um, any commercial information, your tax summary. Tax distribution is very important for you to see where your tax bill is actually going. But in your case, if you're on CAUV, if you click CAUV Ag District, you'll see your application number. And then you'll actually be able to see your soil values. All So this is on their property. This is 300 acres of farmland. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 different types of soils on their 300 acres of property. And so what they could do, what you can do from your home is go through either on Excel or you can do it just by hand. So you can see MHA, remember that's the soil type I just brought up. They have 114 acres of MHA. Currently, like I said, that is a $350 value. So their value for that property is 39,910. Now with the new CEV values, that 114 acres is moving to $1,090 an acre. And so their new CUV value for just that soil type will be $124,292. So they can go through and they can see their new values for all their different soil types. Now, as I said, what they're going to see and what property owners across Ashtabula County and what property owners across Ohio are seeing is that there will be large increases in the value for CUV types um, for most soil types. Now, that 311% increase in value is not a 311% increase in taxes. There are many different things that factor into the tax rate and what your actual tax amount will be that make the value increase not proportional to the tax increase. A number of different things, including reduction factors, most levies that are on the books that you vote on actually bring in the exact same revenue every year. They don't increase in revenue. And so we'll decrease the tax rate by the amount of value increase to make sure that local entities receive the same amount. There's also different aspects because CEV and agriculture is in the same tax bucket as residential. And you pay your taxes proportional to your value in relation to the district's value. So if residential properties increase in value and agriculture CEV properties stay the same, well, now those properties have less proportion than the residential. Now, in this case, because we're also in an update year, we're seeing residential properties increase as well. And so we're really unsure then what's gonna happen in terms of how that works for the proportionality. And we also, of course, this November have levies on the ballot that should voters pass or not pass will also imp impact the tax rate. And so we can't say yet then what the tax amount will be, but. We want folks to be prepared 
and to know that the values are increasing. Now that's the most significant increase in value is the 311 for most people. We do see other increases higher. Um, those are much smaller amounts of acreage though across, across our county. So that would be one way for how you can look and see for your soil type changes. Um, the other way would be um, for you to uh, go to our CEV page. And on the CEV page, you'll actually be able to see soil rates over the years, info on soil types, and a little bit more on CEV. So if you click soil rates over the years, there'll be a PDF that comes up that you'll be able to see what your soil types were going back. Now you'll see that um, 2014 was the last spike. For some of these, they will be lower. So MHA is actually lower than the 2014 spike. Um, for some, they'll be higher. Now we did just get a question, who sets the values for these soil types and how did they determine the values? Um, so I did answer that in a couple of slides back, uh, but real quick, um, just because this came up, the State Department of Taxation will take a formula that you can rewatch the webinar or go to our website on, on, that, um, on that link there here at home and on state mandated CEV. You'll be able to, um, you can click any of these FAQs. You can read my press release right here. Um, you can also visit the Ohio Farm Bureau website um, or uh, this probably one of these two videos will help explain the formula a bit more. Essentially, the state mandates the formula, mandates the values, and we administrate the values. That's based on inflationary pressures and the economic situation as to why those values have increased. Um, so just to answer your question real, real quick. So that's how you view your soil values. And I'm gonna get back to the, the presentation here now. Um, so as you do that at home, feel free to um, feel free to reach out to us ask if you're doing it correctly for you to be able to see your updated value. Now, what's going to be your impact on taxes? Like I said, value increases do not equal dollar for dollar tax increases. After the November election, when levies are either passed or not passed, and we have final values from uh, the state for our update year, then we'll be able to have a better sense of where tax rates are moving. Currently, actually just today, we submitted to our state the um, 2023 triennial value updates. That's for all other properties, your, your land, your residential, your buildings. Um, the state looks at all the sales, all the different market movements from 2020 until 2023 over the past three years since our last update. And they then share with us, where has the market moved? In our case, they say that the total value of Ashtabula County needs to increase by at least 32% based on all the sales that have happened over the last three years. So we've submitted what we believe, tax district by tax district, neighborhood by neighborhood, where the market has moved, where our value should be. And we'll see what the state comes back with in terms of approval or if they're gonna ask us to tinker. Um, so once all those are, are finalized and determined, then we essentially go in and do the tax rate calculation. Remember, we've got about 82,000 parcels here in Ashtabula County, and we have just under 70 different taxing districts, all with multiple levies and with different factors in there. So it's, it's quite a big process, and it takes us usually the month of December to be able to do all of these calculations. Tax bills will be reflected of these new values in 2024, and we'll get those tax rates out as early as possible, just like we did with these value changes for CAUV. Um, but we should know by late December or by early January. So with all that information then, really what are your uh, action steps? So there's a number of different things that you can do and there's a number of different things that I can't um, advise you, yes, no, or indifferent. So there is no pathway to appeal a CAUV value at the local county level. If you disagree with your residential property, value after a triennial next year, you know, you believe our home, your home is not worth what our office says it is, you can file what's called a border revision complaint with our office and contest your value. You cannot do that with CAUV and with your soil value for CAUV. You can file an appeal with our office for the type of soil that you have. And that's a process to essentially say that you don't have the soil that the state geological survey says that you have. 
But in terms of actually finding an appeal with our office to, to dispute the CEV value, you cannot do that. There was a, um, a court case that uh, went to the Ohio Supreme Court, Adams v. Testa in 2017, where there is the option, um, the possibility uh, for an appeal to the State Board of Tax Appeals, the BTA. Um, that is a, a very legal process um, uh, that I can't advise as a non-attorney or not your attorney. Um, it, it is there, uh, but it is uh, very, um, very different than what the traditional value appeal process is here at the county level. Um, so it, in, in effect, there really is no way to appeal if you believe the CEV value is incorrect or if you believe the formula is not a good formula. And so in that case then, um, really if the legal route is difficult or not quite there, um, the route then to change is what happened in 2017 and what I'll get to in the next slide. It's a political, a policy route. CAUV, even with these increases, is still a large significant savings for the folks that are on the program. Land values and market values across our, our county are increasing as well, just due to the market, due to more sales, due to uh, more involvement in the market. We're seeing uh, sales double, triple our old values still coming through our office every day. So the market values for farmland are increasing significantly as well. Um, and CUV is still going to be much lower. Remember, even with the example I showed you, even with $1,000 an acre, um, for that one soil type, that market value for that property there could be five, six, or even $7,000 an acre. And so you're being taxed at a much lower amount, $1,000 an acre versus five, six, or $7,000 an acre. So CAUV is still good. Now you can, if you wish, pull your property out of CAUV and be valued and taxed at the much higher value amount. But Remember, when you pull your property out of CAUV, you will face recoupment, which is you paying the back three years worth of savings. And you're going to then face even more higher tax amounts in the future because your value will be much higher than what the CAUV value is. So really the best option then is to become educated on this process. As I said earlier, Farm Bureau um, has a significant respect and has uh, significant uh, leverage in the state of Ohio, um, I would encourage you to work through our, our local and our state farm bureau uh, on some of these different issues um, and uh, you know, let your voice be heard. Um, this next slide here is how you can have your voice be heard. Asheville County is represented by three folks in the state legislature. The state legislature is the avenue for how the formula can be altered can be changed, um, can be completely dismantled, or uh, can be kept, frankly, the same by inaction. Uh, State Senator Sandra O'Brien, former county auditor here in Ashtabula County. Um, State Representative Sarah Fowler Arthur, she represents northern uh, parts of Ashtabula County, north of Route 90. Heard her family have a family farm. They're intimately aware of, of CUV and the issues. I've spoken with Sandy and with Sarah at length about this. Um, about some of my ideas, about the concerns that we're seeing um, with property values. And then for those who are south of Route 90 in Ashtabula County, a representative uh, Mike Lojcik out of Trumbull County represents you. I highly, highly encourage you. I've already made the outreach. They are aware that this issue is here. Um, but I highly, highly encourage you, call, email, stop when you see them at the store, tell them that you are concerned about the CUV increases, about your tax increases, and ask them to do something and to work with Farm Bureau and with the State Department of Taxation to help fix this. Um, so those are, are your three. Uh, their contact information is online um, and in this PowerPoint presentation as well. So you can definitely reach out to them and share your concerns. Now that is it in terms of uh, the actual presentation. I wanna keep it as short as possible. I know that was 30 minutes, I apologize. There's a lot there. Um, we had a good number of questions that were sent to us ahead of time that I would like to uh, to kind of touch on real quick um, and help address. 
So uh, we'll just get right started um, with those. And if you have other questions, feel free to, uh, to type them in. So the first one, what can crop land owners uh, do to appeal the 300% increase? Uh, so again, there is no mechanism at the county level to appeal or to challenge uh, CEV values. Uh, because of that state Supreme Court case of Adams v. Testa, there is an option through the state board of tax appeals that is a very legal process with legal hearings and essentially is a court case. Um, and I cannot advise or, or share with you that process or what that would even look like. Um, but by and large, in terms of appealing the values, uh, those are essentially determined and ordered by the State Department of Taxation. Um, so another question is, uh, you know, can folks essentially challenge to uh, lower the decrease of, uh, of CUV value increases down to what we're seeing across the county, which is 32% um, increase in property values uh, and whole. And so that's a different kind of um, piece, right? The state ordered us uh, as a county to increase our entire valuation by 32% based on the market sales. That's the market value. What CEV is, remember, is essentially not market value, but it's a significantly lower value that farmers are taxed on. Um, and so those increases are based on the formula that determines CEV values, the formula that we uh, that we talked about right back here. And so um, all these different inputs. And so if we were to actually apply the market value to farmland, the market value would be much, much higher than even the CEV value with these increases. Um, so question here, will this increase be significant enough to make circumstances for woodland owners more beneficial to drop CEV and go through the forestry program instead? So every case is gonna be unique and different. Um, and this is why it's good to look at your values and be able to see, will your values be higher than what the market value is? I would say probably 9.9 .9 out of 10 cases the CAUV value is still going to be significantly lower than what the market value is, or even um, in this case, woodland um, farmers have kind of two different options. If you have forestry, and we've really been proud of the increase in participation in CAUV woodlands uh, over the past couple of years, more folks getting into the program with timber, with woods. So if you have woodlands, you have two different options. One is to enter CAUV using the soil values beneath your woods as the, the new essentially taxable value. Or two, you can enter the Ohio Forest Tax Law Program. We have all this information on our website. And instead of using soil values in the formula, the Ohio Forest Tax Law Program decreases your, um, your tax burden by 50%. It's just a clean, straight 50% decrease. As I said, in most cases, I would say nine out of 10, um, Heather might might uh, correct me here, um, but I would say that your CUV is still going to be a bigger savings than Ohio forest tax law. Um, but individual property owners, I would encourage you to do the calculations for your values based on your soils to see um, what you know what that change could be. And Heather, um, uh, sir, is responding to your question there in type. Um, so feel free to type more questions as I go through. Um, We've already answered, can you submit this to the BOR and the BTA in terms of an appeal? Uh, you cannot submit an appeal to the BOR, only to the Board of Tax Appeals. Um, another question, would it be better to submit all of Asheville County's appeals to the BTA as a group? Uh, so I think what that's getting at is essentially a, a class action or a group lawsuit um, or BTA Board of Tax Appeals filing. Uh, I'm not aware of any mechanism to do that. Um, and, and I don't want to give legal advice. I don't want to kind of encourage um, you know one form of appeal or another. I still believe the best kind of form of of advocacy or action um, is to uh, advocate for a change or a fix at the state level with the formula. Um, another question: Would you help us farmers get the attention of Sandra O'Brien, Mike Loichek, and Sarah Fowler Arthur to roll back uh, these increases? So um, you may have seen the paper. I had a formal meeting with uh, State Representative Sarah Fowler Arthur. Um, and I uh, informally see State Senator Sandra O'Brien quite a bit. Um, so in a about a 40 minute car ride recently where I was driving her, I laid out all the different issues going on. So both of them are very aware of the problem. 
Um, I don't know how much really more I can make them aware of the issue, except for to encourage uh, property owners to contact whichever one is your state rep and um, state senator's office. In addition to the governor's office, oh, Ashtabula County is not alone. There are about 30 other counties across Ohio that are having updates like this. Um, Wayne County, Wood County, Seneca County, Trumbull County, Geauga County are all counties that are facing the exact same issues that we are here in, in Ashtabula. And so um, the more that you know, you write, you call, um, you make your voice heard, I think the better. Uh, next one, can you invite these lawmakers to meet the farmers so they can begin to address this? Um, uh, I'm not going to uh, be their, their scheduler. Um, we have, and, and they're aware of our four upcoming sessions across the county. Uh, our office holds two sessions every year on CAUV. Uh, we've been very proactive in educating and informing. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if they would like to have town halls or to hear from folks or to attend one of our upcoming sessions, um, you know, would highly encourage it. Uh, but I, um, not going to schedule something for them uh, here in the county. So should farmers write letters to the governor and letters to Farm and Dairy and Gazette to appeal uh, to get their appeal out there? I think the more you know, the more kind of out there, the better. Uh, many of you have seen my videos online, have seen kind of the outreach, um, and have seen the push that our office has made. And really, it takes it to the next level when property owners, when you um, make your voice heard directly to them. What are the Ohio, Far Ohio Farm Bureau and the Farmers Union doing about this? Um, so I know we have an excellent um, Ohio Farm Bureau um, uh, director here in Northeast Ohio covering Lake Ashtabula, Geauga and Trumbull. Um, Mandy, I know she is intimately aware of this issue. I know that the, the State Farm Bureau is aware of this issue. Uh, and as I shared, there's a link um, on our website directly to the Farm Bureau website that gives a lot more kind of details information um, some some different uh, interviews and things to help kind of walk folks through why these changes are occurring, um, what your different options are. The most recent budget bill allowed for a property tax reform committee to begin work on property taxes in general. I assume that CEV will be part of that conversation. Um, county auditors ourselves, we've not been asked to participate yet. Uh, I think we're going to here soon. Um, the week after we got the values, I called the CAUV committee meeting of our association just to say, hey, has anyone looked at this? Um, this is gonna be a problem. We have to start educating and getting the word out there. So I know Farm Bureau, like I said, is very respected down in Columbus. Um, I think that they hold the best weight in terms of being able to have some type of impact or some type of change, um, but they're already having the conversations down in Columbus too. Uh, all of the house reps have been on, um, on recess back in, in the districts. I believe sessions are coming back here in September and this will be one of the conversations for sure. Um, next question, uh, has Adams versus an Ohio attorney Mandalay started any legal action uh, on behalf of farmers? Uh, I'm not aware of any lawsuits currently. Um, I know that there were several during the last spike in 2014. I shared one of them, uh, but I don't know of any that are happening currently. Um, next question, has Ohio Governor Mike DeWine given any advice to farmers to get relief? Uh, I'm not aware of any statements by the governor um, or any comments from the governor uh, regarding the, the CEV increases. Uh, unfortunately, I think our county is a little bit unique in that we're pushing this information now. Most um, folks, uh, property owners, most counties, wait until the tax bill comes and you see the change in your taxes and then um, the frustration or the questions start to come. So I believe in educating ahead of time, and that's why we're, I think, probably ahead of the ball in terms of getting the word out there than others across, across the state. Uh, next question, can trustees, commissioners, treasurers, auditors work together to get um, this 300% or other increases in CUV values are reduced? So none of uh, these entities here at the county level, my office have any policy making ability in terms of the, um, the formula, inputs to the formula. Um, I know essentially we can educate our lawmakers. Our lawmakers are educated here in Ashtabula County um, and we can encourage them to make, make changes, uh, but it's really gonna take property owners, more residents as well um, to get that word out there too. But unfortunately, I myself as a county auditor have no authority whatsoever. Uh, next question. 
Please explain the 32% state mandated counting wide increase and what's the reason for that 32% mandate. So remember every three years, uh, the state has us update property values based on the market. Markets go up, markets go down, and it's good to follow and track where values are moving across the county and across the state. Based on all the sales, we know that from 2020 until 2023, ask any realtor, ask any property owner, the real estate market in our Asheville County has been very strong, and it still is actually very steady. And so the state looked at our sales and said, based on our sales, our total value in the county is actually increased by a third. And we have to then follow by increasing property values by um, a third in total, uh, which is about 32%. Um, now, those will be different neighborhood by neighborhood. Some neighborhoods, obviously, their sales, their market has been much stronger. Other neighborhoods, we just don't have the sales, don't have the market. And so their increases will be much lower. But that's 32% for the entire county. Does the value change from the triennial reduce the effect of the 300% CEV cropland increase down to 32%? Uh, so remember, no, that's a different type of valuation. So when we do the triennial, we're improving or increasing market values. CEV, though, is not market value. It's a special tax um, credit value, essentially, a tax savings value, which uh, looks at the income approach to property value, not what the market could fetch. So those increases to the CEV values, even though they're much higher, they're not going to bring CEV to a full market value. CEV is still going to be much, much lower than a full market value. Uh, number nine. Um, in terms of questions ahead of time, does it increase the CEV woodlands, which are at minimum soil values? So you can go through and look at um, the different uh, soil types on our Excel or on that PDF to see um, there's woodlands and there's traditional CEV. Um, and they should largely stay the same at right around $230 or so. But you can look at our website, look at your individual property to see your exact changes. Um, is the 32% a minimum, maximum, or average of, or other type of increase? So it's essentially our entire values increasing 32%. So like I said, in some neighborhoods, the market's been very strong. We've seen sales at double our old values, triple our old values. And so that increase is going to be higher to try and match where the sales have been versus other neighborhoods where the market or sales have not increased as much. So it's not really an average. It's not a maximum or min. It's, it's where the state is telling us. And, and like I said, it's a mandate where the state is telling us to move in total the values here in Ashtabula County. Uh, next question, does the 32% increase affect assessment, tax rates, taxes paid? So like I said earlier, it, it really is, um, it's too early uh, to say what changes, you know, what impacts are going to happen with taxes. Um, a vast majority of your levies that you pass are uh, held essentially the same in terms of revenue. They don't bring in more revenue with higher values. We actually decrease the tax rate in order to keep the revenue the same. So it's kind of like think of income tax. You know, a 1% income tax on $50,000 is the same as a half percent income tax on $100,000. Um, so we'll we'll change the rates for that aspect, but there are many other competing factors that play in with tax rates. Um, like I said, in terms of the proportionality for the different buckets, you know, different residences may increase while land may stay constant or decrease, crop land may go up. Um, so lots of different aspects there. Uh, but you know what we're seeing in terms of increases in values, are most certainly going to cause some increases in taxes. Um, want to be very, very clear and straightforward with that. We just don't know yet to the extent until after the November election with levies and until we get our final values approved by the state. Um, next question, what are the state mandates for other Ohio counties? So uh, like I said, about a third of the counties are in an update year right now. Um, in terms of the range, you know, the highest is 10% more than Ashtabula County, which is 42% down in Southwest Ohio and Butler and Claremont County. The lowest increase is 27% in Athens County, but they're all proportional to where were your values back in 2020. So if your values in 2020 were a little bit higher, 
um, and then the market still has increased, your, your percent increase from 2020 to 2023 is going to be lower because you don't have as much to move. Whereas, you know, counties like ours, we've seen a huge boom in our real estate market since COVID, during COVID, after COVID. So um, every county is going to be a little bit unique, but we're right about in the middle in terms of increases in our, our property values. Uh, next question, what's the state justification for the 32% increase? It's the real estate market and the sales that uh, they track, that we track here in the county. Uh, can that increase be appealed? And for what reason can you provide? So the order um, by the State Department of Taxation to increase by 32% cannot be appealed. It is given to us. It is mandated to us. Now, what happens, though, is remember 82,000 parcels. When we um, move values based on neighborhood sales, based on taxing districts, naturally, there can be ones that um, you know don't quite fit that, that move in the market. And so individual property owners can appeal. If you believe your house is not worth what um, we believe it is, if you believe your land isn't worth what um, our office says it is, your, your business, you can appeal that. But the actual total increase of 32% uh, moving the values, that cannot be appealed. Next question, uh, why is CEV cropland increasing more than other types of real estate? So remember the increase in CUV is essentially based on um, that formula that I shared, the income side, uh, what the average farm, and, and again, I know my grandparents are farmers. Um, they have a good amount of cattle in Trumbull County. Um, I know when, when I say that based on this formula, uh, the state's saying that farms are more profitable than they were um, you know, three years ago or four years ago. I, I know it's, it's not correct. It's not right. Um, but essentially, based on the income side and based on that formula with the inputs, um, the CEV value has increased more than what the land, the market value has increased by based on sales. But the income side, the CEV side is still a significantly lower value. Remember, let's say $1,000 an acre versus the market value side that maybe five, six, $7,000 an acre. So you're still getting a significant savings with CAUV. Uh, next up, why is Ohio shifting the tax burden away from income tax toward property tax? And how is this complying with the Ohio Supreme Court decision? Um, so this is something that I've shared a lot about uh, on our website, in the paper, and hopefully you've been able to, to watch and see. Um, many of you may not know, but the state actually increased the state income tax again uh, this past year. And so we've actually been seeing significant decreases in income tax over, over the past couple of years. But what that means is that there's less state aid, there's less state money going down to local governments. And so local governments then, if you look at your tax distribution, you'll see probably 10 to 15 additional levies that were not there 10 years ago. And uh, that increase then has shifted, in a sense, a tax burden from income tax over to property tax. Now that's, again, a political question, a policy question that you can ask the state legislative folks, um, but that shift has moved from income tax over to property tax. Um, I really can't say why, um, but that is kind of the, the policy side and, and what's been the focus there. Uh, next question. Can you call a meeting at the fairgrounds to get farmers and lawmakers together to begin to make our appeal effective? 700 farmers attended in 2014, the last time there was a 300% increase. So um, this is the first of many sessions that we'll be holding. Um, I don't know really if, if a large one-time gathering is as effective as what we can do, which is have many different gatherings at different times to allow folks in their local communities to come, um, have much more personal, ask questions. Uh, like I said, this is probably our 200th or so session. Um, town hall or education aspect that our office has done. So we'll be continuing to, to push the message out there to answer questions. Um, I just think this is probably more effective doing those four coming up here in October, uh, doing more in the spring than doing one large uh, mass meeting. Um, so uh, that one was a little bit more specific and I think we answered that one. Um, so what are my ideas? I, I guess this is the last question here unless no one else has questions. Um, so there's a couple of different things that I think would, would make this uh, problem much more straightforward. Um, and probably the easiest thing is to essentially treat CAUV just like the Ohio Forest Tax Law Program. And I mentioned earlier, Ohio Forest Tax Law essentially cuts your tax burden by 
it's market-based in that the land is valued by our office based on what the market is, but you get a 50% savings. Now, I don't know what percent it should be for CAUV, for crop lands, for that type of thing, you know, be it 75, 85, 90, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's a much more straightforward, much more local um, economy-based uh, solution to um, the, the problem of making sure that our, our farmers, our agriculture uh, folks have a much lower um, tax burden than um, traditional properties would have uh, that aren't farming. So that's my kind of first, you know, if, if we could do this, I think that would make a lot of sense. It'd be easier to understand. It would be easier to track and to follow. Um, there's also different ideas out there, you know, for example, updating CEV values every year instead of just every three years. What that would have done, as you can see, you're having smaller gradual changes either down or smaller gradual changes up. Um, that's one idea that's floated out there as well, um, or little tinkerings to the to the to the formula. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, auditors we don't take positions on the formula because we don't have a role in the formula. That's determined by the state department of taxation, the governor, the legislature, and input from property owners, input from. Uh, the Farm Bureau, uh, who all kind of come together and, and make that formula um, work for property owners. Right now, we all know, frankly, it's not working for property owners. So there needs to be some type of, of fixes, some type of, of look at it. Um, those are just some of my small ideas, but encourage you to once again, contact, reach out to our state legislative folks. Um, let them know that you're concerned, that your property um, is going to be increasing in terms of value. So uh, feel free. Like I said, that's the last question. I don't see any other questions. Um, feel free to reach out uh, to um, ask if you've got questions over. Um, I'm going back over to uh, in how you can actually determine where your value is going to be moving for CUV. We're more than happy to help answer those, um, walk you through that process at all. Uh, thank you for taking the time today. We'll have this video up on our website. Uh, up on the YouTube channel um, and available sent out by link to everyone so that you can share this with friends, um, those who weren't able to attend today. Um, and uh, the more that we can kind of know, be aware, involved, informed before tax bills hit, I think the better. So uh, feel free to join us at any of our upcoming sessions uh, here in September and October. Um, we'll be happy to, to have you. We'll go over some of the same things, just in a quicker thing, because we also want to touch on the trainer real quick and levies as well. Um, but hope you learned a little bit today. Uh, we're informed a little bit. Um, hope that this was helpful to you. Uh, never hesitate to reach out with questions. And thank you again so much. And uh, enjoy the rest of your night.